ballerina will continue in a moment. Gracing the world of ballet today are two prima ballerinas who can link us to the most glamorous dancing years. Alexandra Danilo is now in her 80s. In 1924, she decided to leave Russia, not for political reasons. She followed George Balanchine to America. Yes, you can finish the man, you know, that's right. Only this is a not very good pose because you go here and nobody see your cute little face. So it should be the other. For 30 years, she was one of the brightest stars of ballet in the West. As prima ballerina of Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, she danced many of the classics and also created roles in many new ballets. Danilo was like champagne on stage, bubbling champagne. So witty and so elegant. When we go glissade, it's two arms and then it's open. It's not now, from her unique experience, she gives a class to the girls at the School of American Ballet. She is teaching one of the variations from Paquita. Yes, on Cabriol. That's right. Yes, Alexander, the same. No, some, something. It's right, right there, here, and then back. That's right, on profile. <laughs> sort of when you look kind of awkward. <laughs> Danilova was a ballerina on and off stage. When I was ballerina during the Jagirov time, it was the ballet Rus de Monte Carlo. We sort of represent the company and try to be elegant and amiable and be very much in contact with the audience. Now I notice a lot of kids are ballerina, but they don't pay any attention on their appearance. I would say they don't consider that it's necessary to go out, be amiable with the people. And I think that's why they are not as known as we used to be, because Wherever one went, one always behaved like ballerinas. But on stage in Danilova's day, as now, technical brilliance alone was not enough. <laughs> okay. When I was a child, it was very necessary, you know, to be virtuoso. And virtuoso was that you had to do 30 to 40. But then Anna Pavlova never did, Karsavina never did, Lapuchova never did, Spesirceva certainly did, Margot never did, I never did. Alicia Markova never did, but uh, you know, it's, I should say, Dame, Ali, Dame Alicia, Dame Margot, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Alicia Marco was the first great English ballerina. She received her Russian name from Serge Diaghilev. He chose her for his glorious Russian ballet when she was only 14. She was the first baby ballerina. Dame Alicia was a great Giselle and the first ballerina in the West to dance the Sugar Plum Fairy in the Nutcracker. She danced these roles throughout her career all around the world. Now she passes on her great knowledge to the dancers of London Festival Ballet, the company she founded. Maybe, yes. maybe boys, yes. but she yes. yes. Maybe that's how it was. I learned the Sugar Plum Fairy first time at Sadler's Wells, the uh, Vic Wells Ballet, when Dame Lynette invited uh, Sergeyev to come and put the classics for us. Uh, I think it was 1934, and in that one year, I was uh, very lucky and happy to have Giselle the Nutcracker, the Sugar Plum Fairy, and the Full Swan Lake. 
all by a British company for the first time. So I suppose really uh, I, I was the bridge over from the Russian school to the English school. Good, straight across. I find it very exciting if one can find young talent and try and help them to achieve. Because otherwise, I've always felt it's very stupid if for somebody like myself, who spent a whole lifetime trying to perfect something, to suddenly perhaps uh, disappear, and it all uh, would disappear with one. It was an understood fact that everything uh, had to be passed on in, in the training that I received because, uh, again, I was very lucky. I had the finest Italian school training with Cicchetti. I had the finest Russian training with Stafiova, Legat, and many other great teachers. So, uh, and it, it was, it, it went without any question that this was passed to one and you would hold it as long as you could and then you would find somebody else to pass it on to. There isn't anything in my mind to touch the human element of passing from one human being to another. The expression, the interpretation, the real if one could say flesh of a role. I will try and uh, pass on and convey the uh, feelings of the Sugar Plum Fairy and uh, it'll be up to our young dancers and ballerinas. For them, I can't dance it for them. They have to find their way then of keeping it alive and passing it on. Stop! Now! Janet, on that everything, mm -hmm. as he lets you down, wait, mm -hmm. because this is going, you see, down there. And also by that time, you'll have, probably have the whole place applauding. So you can't hear very much what's all your... Dame Alicia epitomizes everything we have been saying in these programs about the difference yes. Yes. between yes. good dancers yes. and ballerinas. In my time, when we were trained, there were all the different grades you had to go through. And, uh, well, there were very few ballerinas, and even fewer great ballerinas, if I may say so. But uh, that was the whole goal that one had ahead of one, if one was trying to be. Uh, and not only that, uh, a ballerina, it, it's not just a dancer. As Diaghilev always said, it was to be an artist. There's more to it than just dancing. my programs about the ballerina. I have spoken a lot about the past. I don't want to appear old-fashioned because I'm not. I'm so lucky to be born between the old and the new. 
But as the years pass and times change, we know that a very few ballerinas had a quality that is now almost unobtainable. The legends do not fade. We dancers believe in them more and more. Two words are still the first to be associated with the title ballerina. They are Anna Pavlova. I've only seen her in photographs and tiny clips of film. Sir Frederick Ashton actually saw her dance. I did. <clears throat> I'm one of the few people left who saw Pavlov. I mean, we, we must be a handful of people by now because she, uh, I saw her last matinee at Golders Green just before she died. <clears throat> but I first saw her in, in, in Lima, Peru, where I was living at the time. And she came out there, and I suppose it must have been about 1917. And I must have been about 13, perhaps, or 12 or 13, or something of that sort. I was taken to see her, and it was a ballet called The Fairy Dog, which I never really liked very much. And um, everybody who came out, I kept saying to this South American, I said, is that her? Is that her? He said, no, patience, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. <laughs> then suddenly in The Fairy Dog, the curtains were drawn, and there she was. And I said in Spanish, que fair, which means how ugly she is. Oh, no. No, she was a, had a very positive appearance. She wasn't my idea of, of a beautiful woman. So it gave me quite a shock, but he said, wait till you see her dance. And then, of course, once she started, then I came under the spell, from which I've never lost it. You kept this memory? Yes. From that moment, I wanted to dance also, and I never looked back from that time. She knew how to project magic, about, uh, not only on the stage, but in private life of herself. When you saw her coming out of the stage door at Covent Garden, I mean, the limousine was all lit up, it was all prepared, mm -hmm. the flowers came up and were put there, and the whole thing, and then suddenly she would stand at the door. And how about the crowd who were waiting for Well, the when they were all waiting outside, she would come out with a bouquet, and she'd get into, into the car, and then she would tear it apart, and throw it to the fans oh, who were there. They must be ecstatic. And then drive off in a lit car. And she would always have on a white fur coat and with her very black hair. She used to look wonderful. Although her dancing was extraordinary and, you know, the flexibility of her hands and her arms. What about the foot? And, and this glorious foot and beautiful oh, legs. She had so all good. that, you see. But, I mean, technically, I suppose she was very sort of limited. She had highlights. And she could do certain things. Do you remember that film we saw her, the way she went back like that? And, this, and she had tremendous speed. And plus all that, enormous grace. Grace, which natural now, grace. Which now I don't see so much in dancers. No? This incredible grace. In that day, you had grace in life. You had grace on the stage. You, you, you mean now you, we don't have no, grace in I, life? I think, <laughs> Not to that extent, because people yes. don't want to please. To In those days, you, ha you wanted to please. What is mystery? All this mystery, you know, this must be this pe people, like Paolo, uh, had uh, some sort of mystery inside. Oh, yeah, That's absolutely. That's why it came out. Well, she had, uh, I mean, for want of a better word, she, as a dancer, she had genius. I mean, when you think that her, how limited her vocabulary was, but whatever she was doing, she became that person. Yes. And she was that person. She didn't pretend. No, she, she, was, she was. Whether she was being a, a swan or a rose. She was or, a swan. She was a swan. And if she was a rose, I mean, she had the perfume of a rose. And she danced, I mean... The, so, so what to believe yourself yes, in, in your fragr image. Yes, the fragrance came out. And then there was this tremendous impact on the public that she had. The way that she came out, I mean, she came out in a very positive way. I mean, I, I remember the foot... Uh, the spotlight would tremble up to the corner where she was coming out and, and wait there, and then she would rush into it. And she had this incredible balance that she could rush onto the stage and hold it for quite a time. Well, she was alive from, from the top of her head to her toe. I mean, everything, while she danced, everything was vibrant. You see, people now can become quite dead. They can be wonderful from the legs downwards, mm -hmm. or you from here, never use their polmo, never use their... Eyes. But in Paolo, I see everything oh, everything, dance. Everything, everything. 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 It was uh, even eyes dance. Yes, absolutely.
Some of her dances look like improvisations, don't they? Yes, they look as though the music was like played and as though she just got up and danced. She personified dance. Every great dancer must have an individual approach to her dancing, plus the technique. I mean, it's no good just a dancer coming up and doing your just with a brilliant technique because it's dead. You have to have a personal reaction to the classicism, which is your own. And this is what Pavlova had. She enlivened classicism. She didn't just execute the correct way. She didn't even worry about all that, but she enlivened everything she did. And I think this is, this is something that other dancers too, like Karsavina had a tremendous individuality in her performance, which made an impact. I what mean, is the difference between... Well, uh, Pablo was all spirit, flame, airiness, and Karsavina was a queen. When she was on the stage, it was majesty. I mean, her gesture, the importance of her gestures, the largeness of her gestures. I mean, she, Karsavina was also a wonderful actress. She wasn't a, as theatrical as Pablo at all. Pablo went over the top a bit, and I mean, was a, in, uh, exaggerated in, in, in her own individuality. You know what I mean? It almost, almost getting to the point of eccentricity, really. But with Karsavina, Karsavina was very correct. The difference also between her and Pablo was that, that Karsavina was one of the most beautiful women yes. that I've ever seen. Whereas Pablo made beauty. Lots of people who went to see her, men particularly, didn't think she was very attractive or, or even desirable. I think she's beyond she, that well, desirable. She was. Yes, exactly, because she was she was spirited. The ballerina for me was physical perfection. In my school days in Leningrad, we had a museum, and as a student, I was surrounded by her photographs. I always kept this one of her as Giselle, the beautiful, perfect Olga Spisivseva. The great English choreographer Anthony Tudor remembers her. The first time I met Spisivseva was when they were having a Camargo Society season at the Savoy, I think. And we were all gathered around. She was to arrive for rehearsal. And we all wondered what this Rada Avis was going to be. And then she walked on stage and she was wearing the dirtiest clothes and she looked like a tramp. And then she started to dance and we all started to cry. She was so wonderful. There was nothing extra she ever put there. If she did a turn in attitude, it was just the line of the attitude slowly. And she descended through the foot slowly, which is also a sign of a ballerina. She was really like a Stradivarius violin, Absolutely. which was the, the tone. And everything was so beautiful. Legs. She had a lovely face. Beautiful, beautiful face. Beautiful face. So just like a painted face. But she, was very, she wasn't at all theatrical. I mean, she'd do, you know, the difficult, um, in the first act, which is all that very difficult variation. She would do it absolutely wonderful and just throw it away at the end. I mean, she never went, mm, you know, but, that sort of just. But that's, she yeah. doesn't need, she's no, she perfect. No, she was perfect, but you see, the public don't know about technique. Yes. Spasitza was extremely classical. She did the classical ballads absolutely grammatically correct, so to speak. I mean, she was never departed from what should be done or anything. Wonderful. Ballerina will continue in a moment. Butcher, when I rehearse company or I appear as a guest, 
I experience a joyous excitement if I see a girl with a special ballerina quality. That's what these programs have been all about. I staged my production of La Bayadere in Rio de Janeiro. I was surprised to find there a young dancer with true classical style. Her name is Cecilia Kerker. Until she came to New York for this filming, she had never been outside Brazil. But I think she has the possibility to be a real international ballerina. And this Padre de from La Bayadere, she is partnered by one of the finest of male dancers, Fernando Bujones.
members of the Royal Danish Ballet Company are trained in the Burnonville tradition, which emphasizes light footwork and charm. In that company, the choreographer John Neumeyer has discovered a young dancer who, in my opinion, looks so beautiful and has great dramatic talent. Her name is Meta Bonnie returns to Ballerina. Now a young dancer who already is a ballerina. In the Paris Opera Ballet, they call the ballerinas étoile, stars. And Sylvie Guillem certainly is one. I know she will thrill ballet audiences for years to come. Maurice Bijar agrees with me. I am just at the moment doing a pas de deux for the Paris Opera. And I'm using two young dancers who are very came from the school, they are 20 years old. The boy is called Eric Vuan, and the girl is called Sylvie Guillen. Talking about that girl, I mean, what she's doing with her body, I mean, I've never seen anybody doing such a thing on the technical level she has now. I've never seen this. So I think she has the spirituality and she has the power to be one day a great ballerina. But just now, at the age of 20, I mean, she's something that's unbelievable.